you know, we're, we're acting with these great actors, Ray McDonald, Edward uh, James Almost, the, the entire cast, like the, the veterans, they've been around a long time, we had a lot to learn, but uh, I learned right away in the first season when I would do that extra work on small scenes that were kind of the C storyline, and do some extra backstory with Grace Park and things like that, that I, that I could actually influence the story. And uh, that was a major lesson for me, because I'd have the writers approaching me, and they'd be like, you know, we wrote that scene, uh, you know, in one way, at one level, and didn't think anything else about it. And you and Grace were doing something completely different. Uh, I'm just so curious, what, what, you know, what choices did you make there? Because I have to write for it now. I'm thinking that I'm writing in the right direction, am I? And for me, that was a, that was a big deal. So where he, uh, Hilo got, you know, ultimately, um, you know, I think there's a big growth and, uh, and, uh, of the character over the years. And, and uh, I mean, you get a good sense of who he is in the, in the miniseries. But, you know, he's still a young man. And um, in, in the beginning of the show, he, he faces so much duress, and so many hard situations and animosity throughout the, you know, the, the four seasons. Um, and he, you just really see that he is. He's such a moral and ethical person. And what does that mean? <laughs> You're too very. Why go down here? Because that's. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. Um, I don't know if I'm answering your question. I'm kind of rambling on here. Probably a little manic and tired, but he's he, he's a stand-up guy. He, he becomes a, a man and a leader near the end of the show. I think he's slowly working towards that. He's he's, he's so strong in his convictions, and not, oftentimes he's he, he's going against everyone else, but he has to follow his heart. He's one of those guys who can't do anything but what he thinks is right, what he knows is right.
here's this big budget looking for perfection. Nobody's going to live up to that. And they've gone through everybody, and the only actor they hadn't gone through was me. I walk in there, and it's magic hour, and they need to cast that movie. They're going into production the next day. And so uh, they wanted me. And so my agent, thinking, my God, of course they did, and uh, they got this incredible deal, and here's Lauren Green has all this experience, all of this, all these credits, all this wonderful career, and I have number one bill. And you have no idea, I wanted to apologize to you, I wanted to say, I'm so sorry, and of course my motorhome is this big, huge motorhome, you have to understand, I'm living in a little bubble, out of Beverly Hills, can't pay my bills, right? A little car falling apart, and here I am with this huge motorhome, you know, top billing, and my God, Lauren Green is my father. It was overwhelming. And uh, anyway, I got through that, and then of course, on comes Jane Seymour, the most beautiful woman in the whole world. And yes, clap hands, please. <laughs> and, uh, and I got to kiss this girl, okay? <laughs> It was my last and greatest moment in sci-fi, actually, getting laid. Uh, no, I, I, I'm not kidding you. For some reason, Apollo didn't get much love, you know, much uh, relationship after that. And Tom Zarek absolutely got none. <laughs> I was going to say to Mary, I said, you know, Mary, I mean, Eddie, Tom Zarek, come on. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. But wouldn't it have been kind of an It's not kidding. Triangle, you know, Mary being in love with both these guys. Well, we did have a little flirtation. Yeah. Remember when we were like in handcuffs? I'm not always talking about jail. We were in handcuffs in that, in that, um, back of that truck and we were being taken somewhere for the sidewalk. I do, I We tried to flirt, but I think they cut it off. <laughs> anyway, it was great. I love it. Thank you, Bert. Question. This question is for Mr. Olmos. Um, first, I want to say my friends and I greatly respect your role, my favorite character. Um, this question is of a little bit lighter nature. In the time when the uh, survivors were on New Caprica and when you were floating around in space, uh, you're affectionately referring to your character as Admiral Mustache. <laughs> Just wondering if you have any special memories or <laughs> any input, anything about mustache. <laughs> um, I was going to look like Lieutenant Castillo. <laughs> no, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Mom's the word. Mary. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've never, I've never done a panel at 70. <laughs> you put a career playing strong women. Why do you think there are more great roles for women on TV right now than in the film? Oh, that's him. It's a really great, great question, and I think part of the answer is that television, Eddie talked about this yesterday, several people have. I think we're at the moment, in the moment where television is closer to the beat of our culture and our civilization and what's really going on out there. Television is, is much more directly in communication with you all. And so women are out there working a lot, and they're going through a lot, and they're evolving into leaders. And so the audience is asking for it. 
and the writers are writing it, and I think it's being co-created. So that's kind of what I see. Can I do something? I have something to do um, just quickly before we proceed. Is this a good moment? Okay. Um, we would like to invite all of you in joining us to celebrate the marriage of David Lopez and Heather Pierce. They are being married at uh, any moment. They met through Battlestar Galactica. They met, I do believe, at Dragon Con. Eddie uh, oversaw their engagement. They're here at Dragon Con. And they are, they are being married as we speak. And their groomsmen are, are Thad, Alex, Ben, Delaney, the bridesmaids are Ashley, Jennifer, Kathy, Mary, Avery, Jessica, Miriam, <laughs> Heather. Oh, and Heather's uncle Dan is giving her away. We ask you all to give them a huge applause and they can look at this later. So otherwise they can
the script and you know when they approach these executive producers, like, who am I in this? This kid who's just starting on the show. But I remember sitting on it for days and then I was like, I'm right, I'm running to you, I wrote him a letter. <laughs> he shut me down. <laughs> Basically, uh, that's the way it is, and uh, you're going to do it. And I was like, okay, no problem. <laughs> so, <laughs> when, when I delivered that line, though, I don't know if you noticed, but I delivered it like, I can't believe I'm actually saying this. She's like, what's your people look like? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, uh, I don't know what the line was. Uh, I'm kind of getting off track here, but those lessons were huge for me in the beginning. And I was like, if I do my homework, I made some choices. Uh, I work with Grace, we do backstory whenever we can, because there were significant jumps between episodes, and it was just assumed what had happened between us during that timeline. And I'd make up stuff, and I'd make up stories, and then I'd start, I'd start to see the writer's life for me. And I was like, wow, I can actually influence this in a serious way. It was so empowering for me. I was like, okay, I get this. All right, I understand, I have a choice in this. But, you know, ultimately, it really came down to the writing. They gave me good stuff, and you know, I, I think I did my work. And these, it's, it's such a collaborative process. You, you, you start to understand that. Eddie was touching on this the other day in the last panel, but the writers will write a scene in a certain way, especially when a show is starting off. They don't know their actors very well, and then the actors act the scene out, and something else is created completely, and they're like, "Wow." Okay, we didn't even see that. We have to write for that now. And, uh, you know, that happened often in our show. And it, it, it was beautiful. And once, once we all got to know our characters so well, too, you know, they, they, they did come to us. And I was approached. But it was later on in the show, and they asked me my opinion sometimes. And it was so flattering. You know, we were such a big, well-oiled machine that worked so well together. And it was like this happy family. But so much communication on that set. Unfortunately, like Eddie says, it, it really was, like, the most amazing experience. I'm not sure if I'll have one like it again. I don't know if I answered your question. Yes, you did. You, I mean, you want to touch on Ballard. I mean, Ballard, unfortunately, was only, um, you know, two seasons, 26 episodes. And I was very confused at the beginning of that. I went in brimming with confidence. I came off of Battlestar Galactica, acting with heavyweights. Some of the best actors in the world, seen the best work I've ever seen. The Ross was true for it. I came off that show so confident, you guys. I was like, I found out I got uh, Dollhouse, Joss Whedon. I'm like, I'm going to knock this out of the park. I cannot wait to eat this up. I'm going to own the show. I'm so excited. This is the character I want to play. A darker, sort of conflicted uh, uh, loner, which Paul is in a lot of ways. I mean, he's, you know, there's similarities between him and Hilo, but he's very different. He's, he's a very self-righteous guy, Paul Ballard. But once we started it, it, you guys all, for those Dollhouse fans who know, we had to reshoot the pilots. Joss had a very specific vision, and if you see the original pilot that he did, it's very dark and noir, and it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful piece, man. I, I really liked it. But then we, we, we chopped it up, and then we, we spread it out over four episodes and reshot the pilot, and it was just... We were struggling in the beginning, man, and it didn't know where it was going, and I wasn't getting any feedback, and I came from such a set that was so, like, you know, you nailed the scene, people told you. You didn't need that, but there was that communication, you felt it, and we didn't have a lot of communication at all in the beginning, because everyone was so worried about the show going to shit. I think Joss was dealing with the, uh, with the network every single day, so there was, I was very confused, and it was a very humbling experience to be in that show, because I went into so much confidence, and then I was very confused for episodes and episodes. I couldn't find them for a while. Like as Eddie said before, I mean, it takes you a while to, to find uh, your character's music. I went in there thinking I knew his music. I, I had ACDC rock in my head, man, but there was like some sort of weird Mozart playing in my head. I was confused, like, so it, it was, yeah. It took a while. Thanks. Yet with Captain Rainer, but I will say 
I kind of think that Laura Roslin prepared me for Captain Raider because there is something about her isolation and her focus and her agenda that I'm not sure I could have stood in completely on my own had I not had Laura Roslin first. And now that we're learning more about her, and she's evolving, and I'm starting to see the complexity of that situation, I think I'd probably best answer that in about four years. Uh, hopefully we'll be going with major crimes, so thank you. Keep coming up with some brilliant, brilliant series. I don't know about you, I, I have trouble 
watching network anymore. I, I really do. I mean, I, I go over to a home box office and Showtime and everywhere else because I'm bored most of the time. I'm looking for something unique, different, out of the box, something that has to say. And, and, and this is important. You know, for a while, we got into a business where you almost had to apologize if your script, your story, had some something to say about the world. Somehow, it was not politically correct to do that. And yet, for me, art has always been about mirroring life, mirroring the world, showing insights into the human condition, who we are, where we come from. And I just think for, um, thank God for cable, because cable, honestly, has opened up the doors for amazing writers to find a talent, to find a, a place where they can bring all of their rich talents and abilities uh, and really develop these amazing stories and then get the best actors in the business to come portray these characters. So, you know, I, uh, I think it's gotten much better television. I just hope to God movies, you know, have a turnaround. You know, we all gather together and pray to the Lord's cobalt. You know, maybe we'll get some help. Thank you. But my memory is that the only conversation that I had regarding um, Rosalind's death was that she died. Is that we didn't back off from her. And, and, and Ron and I talked about it towards the end, and I, and I said, we're still going there, aren't we? And he goes, are you still there? And I said, absolutely, are you? And he goes, absolutely. Because there was, um, there was a bit of movement to keep her alive in the air, and I felt that her whole story, spiritually, um, psychologically, emotionally, had to do with a person who was having a final chance to play out some very old karma that meant that their mortality was not the primary issue. And that was really the deepness of that role, is to constantly move the focus to the bigger issues at hand and let the dying be secondary. So uh, what was really important to me was that she died. Um, as it turned out, it was really important to me that she died on screen with Adama. And I think it was a brilliant choice by Ron. Um, it was certainly important to the fans, and it was very important, I think, to the love story. So I was very pleased by the way it ended. Thank you. My question is, uh, especially for the gentlemen on the panel, as a woman who has been sexually abused, I was very moved by Gina's um, her whole story arc. Can you tell me how did you feel about your character's response to what happened to Gina and what almost happened to Athena? I mean, that stuff was always so hard to deal with. But, you know, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't shy away from that on the show. And, uh, I, I remember the, 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 the very graphic scene where, where Boomers, you know, about to be raped by a group of guys, and Aaron Douglas and I were doing that scene, and Ryan, of course, being the director that he is, he gets right into it, we have that relationship, and Grace was very, you know, set on getting right into it, and, you know, the reality of it, with, you know, Aaron Douglas and I are down the hall, and we're listening to the, basically, it, it, it happening, her like pleading for help and it's starting to happen for a couple minutes before we go in, before he give us our cue come running in. I was losing it. <laughs> I was losing it. I couldn't stand it. I hated it. 
I went in there enraged every time. <laughs> there's, a, there's a huge stuntman who, who works with us, Paul, Paul and I, I was going in there and <laughs> giving him a jumpy knee, and I was, I was kneeing him. <laughs> I couldn't help it. Luckily, he was wearing a chest plate and stuff, and he was telling me he's a monster from that. But these things are really difficult to, to shoot. Really ugly and harsh. <clears throat> I'm happy we touched on that in this show, though. You know, it's, it's yeah, I, I don't know, very difficult, very difficult to see and watch. But that's one thing about this show: we never shy away from the issues. You know, we examined them, and really made you look at them. Got to see it, 
And people who saw it on the first day are saying, oh man, I got it, I got it, I got it. But people who didn't see it for like 10, 15, 20 years after are saying, oh man, I just saw it. Oh my God. That's what happened with Blade Runner. Blade Runner was a tech man. It's people who see Blade Runner for the first time today are more blown away than people who saw it the day it was finished. And the same thing's going to happen with this. It's a piece of work that will sustain the test of time and will be stronger on the 50th anniversary than it was on the day that came out. I gotta tell you, 
the development of a character and the, well, the way you portray a character uh, and the choices that you make are really uh, a substance of your art form. And, uh, these are the choices I made. And uh, Lauren, who I adore, uh, you know, my lifetime was brilliant, brilliant uh, character in life and in, in film. Uh, bigger in film than the in life. But uh, I will say that the reality that we brought with Battlestar Galactic together, the re image, and I have to thank Lynn Larson for creating the piece in the first place because I think he deserves a huge amount of respect. <coughs>
because I don't think I've ever seen anybody allow what the pressure is of war, the pressure of, of trying to command and sending people out to their death every single day. And you know they're not going to come back. They're your kids. Send them out, you know. And, and that, and, and not take, you know, the, the, by the end of that, you're like a babbling idiot walking on the side of a wall. And at the same time, you have to be so and strong that you have to be able to sustain and control yourself and get up in the morning and walk down the hall. And then all that, I said to me, I said, man, this is it. I said, this is the, the role of a lifetime. I don't think I'll ever be able to create something of this magnitude again. And, and I told us that everybody on the set, both the writers, all the producers, everybody around, I said, this has never happened to me before. It will never happen again. <laughs> that was it. You don't know how, what it takes, the courage uh, of an actor to be willing to play a lead role in a series and to show the level of vulnerability, the level of a man losing it and, and having to deal with his dark side. You know, most, most actors will always pull the little punches. They want to come off looking good. They want to come off looking strong at the end of the day. I've never seen any actor in my life that was willing to go to the depths that you went to in that role. I, I seriously, I had all the We are here together rejoicing and really being thankful for something that has happened. And we are all part of it. So I thank you all and I love you all. So